for the EOQ discount model, but what we're really asking is, should we take advantage of quantity discounts? So this is our brown sugar example again, where we have our demand. You notice that I put the holding cost as a percentage of the inventory cost. What we have here is what our supplier has given us as the, the quantity discounts. Um, these would be our costs based on those discounts. The way we handle um, quantity discounts is we calculate the DOQ for each. Uh, we analyze the, the quantity for validity and adjust if necessary. And then we add, uh, calculate the total cost for each. And of course our goal is to go with the lowest total cost. Okay, first we calculate the individual EOQs for our three options, and then we determine validity. Um, I just label them Q sub 10 to stand for the $10 price, and Q 9.9 .9 for the 990 price, and the 980 price, just to keep it separate. Again, we know that uh, our D is uh, 10,400, we know our order, our setup costs are 200, and notice in the denominator here um, that since we had a percentage, our percentage was 20% in inventory, it's going to cost us 10, so we take 20% of that, um, that's how we come up with this number. Similarly, 20% of the 990, 20% uh, of the 980. These are the results. Uh, plug them into the calculator, find it out for yourself. So that's how we calculate the basic EOQ here. Um, the second thing we do is we check for validity. With our quantity discounts, the first quantity was from 0 to 1,499. This fits in that range, so that is valid. Um, our next quantity was 1,500 to 4,499. This is less, so this is not valid. So we have to change this Q to the minimum of that quantity discount range, which is 1,500. Um, same with the third. Our third quantity discount is uh, 4,500 and up. This is obviously less than that. It's not valid. We have to adjust to get to the minimum of that quantity range. Okay, finally we look at the total cost. Um, what the total cost we've been looking at is our ordering cost, or our setup cost, plus our holding cost. Uh, for this cost calculation, we also add the cost of inventory. Before we've been ignoring that, because uh, all the cost of inventory would do would scale. This time it makes a difference, so we add it in. So, our typical formula, our ordering costs are D divided by Q times the cost per order. Our holding cost is Q divided, our average inventory, which is Q divided by 2 times the cost to hold. I've highlighted the Qs in red just to emphasize that we use the adjusted Qs. We do not use the EOQ calculation. Remember, for 9.9 .9 and 9.8, we had to go to the minimum order quantity to get the quantity discount. That's what we use for the Q here. All right, for our cost of inventory, we use our annual demand plus the cost of inventory. So for uh, the first one, which was the $10, it's 10,400 times 10 um, is what we do for our cost of inventory. All right, you notice in the first one where we use the EOQ, just as we'd expect, our ordering cost and holding cost are equal because we have the equilibrium, but what, look what happens at these next two costs. Um, they get distorted because we're holding more inventory and we're ordering less. We're not at the equilibrium point, but because our cost is less, we're willing to offset it a little bit. And again, the solution for this problem, and to keep uh, Mr. Richards happy or Mr. Jaggers happy, is we go for the lowest cost here. Of course, 105 is less than 106, so we would change our order quantity to 1500 in order to get the $9.90 price.